my name is Michaela Gray. I'm Valentina Noacco. And in February, a few PhD postdocs and lecturers from the Hydrology Group at Bristol University organized a conference on gender equality called the um, Quality Through Equality Tackling Gender Issues in Hydrology. And we have been lucky to have three invited speakers Anna Klok from uh, Reading University, Joshua Larsen from uh, Birmingham University, and uh, Elena Toth from uh, the University of Bologna. And throughout the day, I was lucky enough to catch up with Professor Hannah Cloak to talk further about her experiences. Hannah, you're a full-time professor at Reading University and also a busy mother of four children. How do you fit it all in? Yeah, so I, I have a full-time job at Reading University. But I work flex time, so although I'm full time, I arrange my time around my family. Uh, I have four children, they're all now in school, um, but I have to come from school, uh, dentists, things to ask school activities, and also deal with my comfort and holidays, um, and parents' evenings. So clearly, flexibility is very important for you. How does that work at Reading University? So it's, it's, it's quite a normal thing to do. I think that we have lots of different forms of working. One of those is physical working and move your working hours around to things and types of caring, responsibilities. Um, so it might mean that I do some short days and um, I can drop off the kids so and we can go to school. I can do some long days, very long days. My husband can do opposite to have short days on those days. So we do some sharing between us. He also has a very busy job, so it's a very collaborative <laughs> approach. Um, sometimes we get it wrong, but mostly as long as we communicate well, uh, we make fun. Sounds like you've got a great partnership going on there. So Hannah, not only do you work at Reading University, but you also do work outside of the university. How do your experiences compare? Yeah, so I think Reading is a little bit of a bubble in terms of particularly gender equality. I see when I go for a national or international meeting in hydrology, for example, I'll notice that perhaps I'll be the only woman or a few of us will be there um, in a more male-dominated environment. So I think that there is still an issue to be dealt with. Um, you know, maybe Reading, I don't really feel it. So Hannah, I was in the audience this morning listening to your talk and one of the things that really impressed upon me was the importance of saying no. Could you expand a little bit more on that for me please? Yes, yeah, so I, you know, there, we are, there are times to say yes, but there are times to say no. Um, you need to stop before you're exhausted, overwhelmed. Um, that's, it's very tempting to just say I've got to keep going, I've got to keep on this trip, I've got to grab every opportunity. But, it's right to say no and sometimes and those times are you just need to ask yourself, am I doing too much? Am I going to be on the code way before you get there so that you don't burn out and exhaust yourself and disrupt everything? And when do you say yes? So I ask myself normally, it's normally things like um, say yes to the things that you think you can't do, you're scared to do. So uh, you might be terrified to speak in front of <laughs> people, um, maybe to work with government or something really scary, um, but just say yes anyway, and then do it anyway. If that's the only thing that's stopping you being scared, then you should definitely say yes. And finally, what is your top tip for people starting out in science and engineering about maintaining their health and happiness as well as succeeding? Um, I would say to to be brave, so like say yes to the right things, um, but be flexible, be prepared to compromise, um, and your career may not go exactly where you want, but you can always find success in a different path. And flexibility. Thank you very much, Hannah, for taking time out to talk to me.